Welcome to the Seller Roundtable e-commerce coaching and business strategies with Andy Arnott and Amy Wees. Um, Dana, what do you do in terms of, um, you know, seasonality? Um, you know, are you, are you writing, crafting listings, you know, say for, you know, we got Christmas coming up here. Are you um, including any type of holiday themes uh, in your, in your listings? Do you update, you know, do clients come to you and say, Hey, we want a, a holiday theme listing, things like that. Um, uh, if you're doing that kind of, <laughs> how are you doing that? And, and what are you doing there? Good question. So when it comes to seasonality, if like for, um, I'll give an example And this doesn't, I don't think there's a specifically a right, wrong, good, bad. It's just what we do. And I think that Amazon, as you know, and everybody probably knows, there are so many variables that we don't even know that we can give credit to something and it might not even be what was the reason that something worked. Well. So for example, um, where we like, there's a line I'll draw. So like we'll run sales and, and have promotion codes and we'll change out a bullet point here and there to run deals. If you want to do a black Friday type thing, that's great. What we're, where we kind of cross the line is where it would be like changing the listing for every season. So it's like a father's day sale on our product. And then a, you know, a uh, 4th of July sale, like we wouldn't want to change it that quite that drastically or that often um, in terms of like running sales or, or what have you, when it comes to the copy. Uh, but there is a little wiggle room to run deals and promotions and, um, switch things up, um, from time to time. Um, that's how we roll out roll with it. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Uh, we, uh, we, we target a few holidays for, uh, some of our, you know, kind of more giftable items. Uh, but we also try to, to keep that to a minimum. We also have the, the listing written in a way though, that we don't really have to change it. It's written well enough to where we've got all the keywords that, um, you know, would convert for either one of those holidays. It just comes down to targeting those once you get close to those holidays with offsite traffic, PPC, things like that. Um, we got a quick question from uh, the audience. Harsh is asking, I heard that changing uh, changes to existing listing will make it uh, re-index as a result. Sales may go down in the short run. Is that true? That is true. Um, Harsha, there, it does take uh, some time to settle. So, you know, if you update a listing and, you know, the next day your sales go down, um, you know, we always like to say, give it like a week. Um, you know, usually within a week, you'll know pretty solidly whether that was a positive change or a negative change. Uh, but as Dana mentioned before, there's so many different factors going on on Amazon. Um, it's really hard to get, um, you know, a, a good AB test on Amazon because, you know, somebody, um, you know, some school might come in and say, oh, we need 50 of these widgets for our fifth grade class. Uh, and they order it. And then all of a sudden you got this massive order um, that you, uh, that you received and you, you know, you just updated your list. You're like, oh, that, that worked, you know? So it's really, really hard to gauge that. Um, that being said, I mean, you know me, I'm always talking about turning dials. I always love to turn dials, but I think a week is a good test. Um, and if it doesn't uh, improve, then maybe go back. Now we're coming into Q4 now. So in Q4, kind of every day, uh, you know, or every other day, you'll, you'll see some, you know, slight lift in sales usually. Um, at least we're high volume. So for us, we, we can kind of see every day it start ticking up a little bit, a little bit more. So it's a lot harder to test listings, um, in Q4 in terms of, you know, changing them and seeing if it's, it's a, an effective change or not. Um, so I just gave you a complex answer for one that's, you know, going to continue to be complex, but, uh, yeah, it's worth trying. Um, I always say though, if, if it's, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, if you're getting good sales and good volume and it's continuing to climb day after day after day, leave it alone. Um, because of that re-indexing, you know, you could make a negative change. And then even if you change it back to the way it was before, um, you know, we've seen that happen before where, um, it doesn't drop right back to where it was before. So if the listing is working and increasing day, you know, every day, every week, um, you're seeing an uptrend, then, um, I would not touch it. Dana, anything you want to add to that? No, well said. And uh, yeah, I will double down on the fact that yes, it will de-index and expect that. And um, a week is a great, uh, a great measure as well. So, um, and then just again, zooming out, like I used to be in the weeds so bad, like every 10 seconds I'm refreshing <laughs> like the stats. And so I get like, I'm a freak with that, but the more you can zoom out, and average stuff so instead of focusing on the day to day to day because there's so many factors that come in like 
I mean, like a holiday can throw stuff off. A hurricane can throw stuff off. Like there are so many things that are out of our control that impact our sales that we go mad trying to like react to every single change. Um, so zoom out as best you can. Look more at weeks, you know, that kind of thing. Look at the year, just make sure it's trending upward. Um, that'll alleviate, alleviate a lot of the anxiety that comes with like the sudden changes, like the end, the indexing and all that. Absolutely. So um, Dana, what do you see in terms of, you know, people, people writing headlines uh, and, and bullet points? I know you mentioned, you know, using all the space, which is a good tip. Amy and I always, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> pound that uh, into people's minds. We also, you know, love people to fill out the back end as much as possible with the, you know, accessory fields and, uh, you know, those kinds of things. But, um, you know, what, what, what mistakes do you see, you know, a lot of like majority, like when these, when your clients come to you, uh, you know, what do you, what are you seeing in the, in the, uh, in the headline and in the uh, bullet points that you're like, Oh, here we go again. Yeah. Um, surprising. One of the big things is just, they don't, they don't use all the space. So, so that's not everybody that's maybe half, but that's such an easy fix right there. Everybody like you, you know how many more keywords you can fit like in just a few characters, it's, it's crazy. So that's like the first thing. Um, and then with, I'll double down on that. With using all the space, one of the coolest things about being a copywriter is we can figure out how to get the same point across or say the same thing with fewer characters. That's what Amazon has taught me. And I'm, I'm so like grateful for that. It's so cool. Um, so after you go through, and now you don't have much wiggle room with long tail keywords, of course. Um, but I like what Andy suggested earlier. I call it going for two for ones where you can park a, you know, phrase in between two long tails and it becomes one really long one, but it's more like two or three all at once. So that's, that's awesome. But when it comes to the actual copy side of it in like the, the non SEO part of your listing, like reduce it and say the same thing with fewer words. Okay. So you can use abbreviations too, like in um, some places and, all that um and then as far as uh headline and bullet points specifically like let's break this down i love zooming out i don't know it just makes more sense to me because it seems like it's easy to get caught in the weeds as a seller with all the different tactics out there but um let's zoom out like your title what's the point of it two things literally two things number one get you indexed in the search results as high as possible it's great now here's a cool thing guys test this there if you want there isn't really that strong of a correlation between how high you're listed in the search result and how much money your listing makes so number one is great yes but that doesn't guarantee you're gonna make all that money do a like search sometime okay so don't sweat it if you're not the top like one or whatever like you can still make money as long as you're on page one so get listed that's half of the battle with the title the second half of the battle that people don't do well and that um you guys can take to the bank right now is you got to get clicked on like there has to be reasons for them to click on you over everybody else because what does it matter that's proving my point or my theory that there's not a strong correlation between where you fall in the search result and how much money you're listing will make because just because you're one two or three it's not google it's amazon people are more scroll happy um they're looking at other things so they're looking at price reviews right and then your title it's a lot easier to compete on your title than it is on price or reviews right at least that's my philosophy. So make your title more enticing to get them to click on it over all other options, right? And be very careful because the title is by far, as you know, the most policed por uh, portion of the listing. Um, so don't use naughty words that'll get you in trouble, of course. Um, but make it enticing. So that's half the first half of, of like the title. Now the second half of the bullets. What's the point of the bullets? Think of this. It's again two things. Number one, as Andy knows well, it's to get uh, more keywords in there. Okay, so when you can slam more, you got a lot more room in the bullets than you do the title to get those keywords in. And yes, they do make a difference in the bullets. They do get indexed. Um, it's important to get those in there so you can get the search traffic and so that um, you give Amazon what it wants and your listing is appearing as relevant. Secondly, though, in my opinion, more most importantly, is it converts visitors once they get there. That's the point of the bullets. It's getting someone from like opening the door into your shop to eating something on the counter to buy it. that's what your bullets do all right so reasons to buy your product over all the other options on amazon are hugely important to put bullet points 
Um, and again, it's a blend of SEO and copy. Um, and hopefully that makes sense as to why uh, or what we're doing on each of those um, pieces of the listing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right, Kevin, let's see. Fill, <laughs> filling the space. <laughs> Fantastic. Nice little uh, SEO uh, listing there in the chat. So um, yeah, Dana, one of my, one of my favorite characters is the, the and symbol, uh, you know, just that using going through and replacing a and D with and is, is huge. And I've learned that on social media as well. I always go like write something out and then go back and replace and with the ends, you know, with the end sign. And uh, that's just a, a little example of, you know, some, some shortcuts and, and ways to save space. Um, so Dana, we were talking about this a little bit before we got, we got going, I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, because, uh, I, I went on your website and saw that, uh, that you were at, um, I think, uh, it was called, uh, I think they were still calling it, uh, ASM or something like that. Uh, it's now SellerCon. Um, I forget what they used to call that conference, but anyway, we were, I was there and I started seeing these, these, uh, funny straw hats, people wearing these funny straw hats. And I, and back then I didn't, I, I didn't know where they came from, what the reason was, but some people had them. Um, and I want to say, I think it was on the last day, but I, I can't remember exactly, but, uh, can you fill me in on, on the backstory on that and kind of what happened? Uh, because it's, uh, it's pretty funny and interesting. And this is one of those things where I love when people, uh, you know, the old adage, you know, when you get lemons, make lemonade, I would say you definitely made lemonade in that, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like make, make something, uh, you know, make something out of that, out of that disappointment. But, uh, yeah, tell us that story. Oh man. Um, how long is like the statute of limitations? Like, I think it might be up by now. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. Um, <laughs> okay. So I'm so glad you brought that up. Uh, I actually kind of forgot about that. So long story short, um, try to keep this as lighthearted and positive as possible. Um, we all go through crap in business. We all get screwed over. Um, that's part of the process. So um, I was supposed to, I did a barter. So I did a bunch of copywriting for these guys and, um, my barter was that I get to speak, uh, at their event in front of, um, you know, several thousand Amazon sellers, which is immensely valuable for me. So it was a win-win. Um, anyway, I did what I was supposed to do. And then like four days before the conference I had my whole team, staff, everybody, tickets booked, all that. Um, I get an email that I was cut from the speaking lineup with no explanation, nothing. And I'm like, Oh, <laughs> what? Like how that, what? Um, so Long story short, I had already had 3,000 straw hats. I'm a farmer from Wisconsin, right? They were a prop that I was going to hand out to the audience. And my goal was I would have one on stage and then I'd take a selfie. Be like 3,000 people in the crowd wearing a straw hat. And it'd be like a cool like um, thing I could, I guess, post and make a bunch of noise and all that. A lot of fun. Right. Um, so the hats were on the way. They're coming from Omaha, Nebraska, heading to Vegas, to the Venetian Hotel. And um, we had non-refundable tickets. So we're like, okay, we're going to go anyway. And uh, so, of course, we wanted to be as minimally disruptive as possible and keep it fun and all that. So um, we uh, hired some people off the street in Vegas and uh, put them in some event staff shirts, snuck them into the Venetian. And uh, before the events happened, we didn't want to actually disrupt when the event was going on and, and that kind of thing. We wanted to kind of just keep it like light. And uh, so when everyone was lined up um, before, I think, whenever the doors opened, they're all lined up in the hall. And the hall is the hall. I mean, shoot, uh, we can be in the hall. So we, um, like, bombarded the line with all these hats and started just handing them out like crazy and um, just having all this fun. And uh, 13 minutes, we got uh, <laughs> away with handing all these hats out before we got kicked out of there. And um, it was from what I could see, everyone thought it was really fun. And um, anyway, we got a point across that um, <laughs> the farmers are showing up. So where, where were you during all that madness? Were you in the line or? Uh, I don't, I don't remember. I, I think I don't, I don't know. I don't think I saw it um, um, in the line. I, I think I saw it, like people wearing them like later on in the day. Um, I don't, I don't remember seeing them in the, in the, uh, in the line, but oh, uh, yeah. That's, that's funny. Yeah. I remember yeah, there was, a lot of kids that like took them home and do it in ears and it was a lot of fun because i mean we're in vegas like straw farming hats that is like what i mean it is vegas but even right. still that was that was a lot of fun so 
yeah there you yeah, go <laughs> yeah that, that that many people together wearing the the straw hats was uh, definitely yeah some something to notice cool all right uh well uh, guys in the audience if you have any last questions for uh dana please ask away um in the meantime uh dana i know you have a uh have a bunch of books and and uh you know things like that tell us where people can find you um you know the books that you've written um you know any anything that you want to let people know about yeah so uh there's so much um you guys i mean we can get you down a wormhole if you want but um i think realistically if this has resonated with you i know i've only kind of scratched the surface here um but we do have i just reopened my um amazon listing optimization uh service so my team is now, uh, we went on a couple year hiatus, but we reopened it. I just finished a, um, a listing for uh, Russell Brunson um, and uh, we are back chugging away on that. So um, you can go find more out uh, at copywritingprofessor.com. We still have a, um, a link for it. But uh, if you want us to do uh, Amazon listing optimization for your listings, we are available. Um, it's not terribly cheap, but it is obviously worth it. So. Um, yeah, be the best next step. Cool. All right. Um, and then uh, don't you you don't you have a new book out? Yeah. Oh man. So oh, I don't think I go out my office. So I just <laughs> came out with a book. Yeah. Um, so being in this game for uh, over a decade of of business, um, I finally think I've figured out like the one thing that every single business can do. Um, to be successful, even especially Amazon sellers. So I came up with a book called The Truth About Business. Um, it's basically 13 years of business lessons and exactly what not to do. I think everybody talks about what to do, but it's like everything you shouldn't do. Um, and then it shows how the top 1% actually play the game. Um, so it's really cool. If you guys like being like zooming out and seeing the big picture, like I've tried to do so far, it's, that's a really cool um, resource for it. It's called The Truth About Business. Cool. Awesome, Dana. All right. It looks like we don't have any questions. So uh, we're, we got let off easy today, Dana. Hey, thank you so much for, for coming on. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be in touch. Um, and uh, thank you so much for being on the podcast. And guys, as you know, um, we are climbing the charts on the podcast. We are beating some of the big established podcasts that have been out for years. We really, really appreciate that, guys. I think part of the reason is because, you know, we're, we're sharing with you what, you know, most people keep secret. Uh, we try to give you guys the best, uh, the best tips ever. Um, without holding back. So uh, really appreciate you guys. I know that you guys are subscribing and um, rating and, and sharing and, and doing all that stuff. And we really, really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. Uh, Amy will be back next week. Uh, and we will probably hear some great stories uh, from China. I can't wait for that. Uh, we got a, a lot of stuff in the works. Uh, next year is going to be a, an epic year with all the stuff we, we've got in, in, in the works. So thank you guys so much. And we'll see you again next week, 1 p.m. Pacific time. Take care. Thanks for tuning in. Join us every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for live Q&A and bonus content after the recording at sellerroundtable.com. Sponsored by the ultimate software tool for Amazon sales and growth, sellerseo.com and amazingathome.com.